It's been known for a long time that ALS is very genetic. And in fact, before we started the work, there were a number of genes that were already known uh, to confer risk of disease. But it's very different to have a few genes as opposed to a comprehensive catalog of the genes that confer risk. And the reason that it's different is that what we really need to zero in on are the biological pathways that, when perturbed, can cause risk of disease. And when we have one gene, it can often be involved in multiple pathways. So it may not tell us exactly what goes wrong that causes disease. But when we start to fill in the complete catalog, we'll have a much clearer pointer to the relevant pathways that cause disease. And those pathways are the targets for therapeutic intervention. The main thing that we did in, in this study that is different from what's been done before is that we deployed completely contemporary sequencing approaches to be able to comprehensively sequence all the genes that make protein. So there are around 20,000 genes in the, in the human genome that encode protein. And we know that that's where a lot of the mutations that cause disease reside. And relatively recently, it became possible to economically interrogate all of that part of the genome and find almost any variants that are there. But that hadn't yet been done on a large scale in ALS. So what we did is pull together 3,000 samples of ALS patients, DNA samples from ALS patients from all over uh, the country and, in fact, beyond the U.S. And we used this sequencing technique called whole exome sequencing to interrogate that part of the genome and to compare the variants that we saw in the genomes of patients with ALS to individuals that don't have any um, neuropsychiatric diseases that we know of. The, the primary things that we found when we did the study are, number one, we found that many of the genes that are already known to confer risk of ALS do so and are identifiably risk factors when you take on the entire genome, as, as uh, I described using this new technique. And what that does is validate the approach that we really can discover new causes by looking at the genome as a whole because ones we already know about come through. And we also discovered, in fact, an entirely new gene. And this gene had what we call genome-wide significant evidence of involvement, which means that we can say with high statistical confidence that there really are variants that we've identified in this gene that confer risk of ALS.